the strong revival of the solar market in India has got several winners. But perhaps the most interesting category is the solar tracker. We recently talked to Dan Sugar, the CEO of Next Tracker, to know more about the expansion of solar tracker across the world and the works done by Next Tracker in India and in different parts of the world. This is Manish Kumar and you are watching the conversations with Saur Energy International. Dan, tell us about uh, your India experience so far, the Next Tracker story in India. Well, Next Tracker has been investing in India since I founded the company in 2013. We've had an office in Hyderabad. We started with a few staff. Today we're over 200 staff there. And we've been supporting customers. We did an initial demo project with Infosys back in 2014. We did India's first 100 megawatt tracker in uh, 2014 or 2015. And then since then we've uh, supported 35 utility scale projects across India. While we've been building our team and supporting these projects, we've executed a massive expansion of manufacturing capacity. And today we're announcing 10 gigawatts of capacity to serve the market. So you won some big contracts recently. Does that indicate a long-term shift for you? as far as the Indian market is concerned? Well, what we've seen in India is a maturation of the market toward higher quality systems, a flight to quality, and a flight toward companies that are proven capacity to deliver. And that's the ethos of Next Tracker. Our culture is about doing what we say, delighting customers, and investing and going ahead of it. That's why we've not only developed the highest performing tracker, but then we've built a software business that provides machine learning, artificial intelligence into the actual operation systems in a very practical way to, for these systems to generate more energy. So we've seen the market in India really expanding, but it's been a part of a continuum. And we have supported that with investment in manufacturing capacity, with project engineering, with actual staff on the ground. Through this capacity also, we've been able to export our products from India to four continents around the world, and also build our regional hub for operations and maintenance support for uh, customers uh, in this entire region. What, what, what's been the big differentiator for Next Tracker in India? Because this has been a very competitive market, very value-driven. So what's work for you eventually. I think the thing that's worked for Next Tracker in India is really focusing on our core value which is innovation, mm -hmm. quality, right. customer focus. And so we've kept our eye on the ball. It's not a race to the bottom. What it's a race for is ensuring that every customer engagement, every project engagement is a successful experience for our customers where the projects meet or exceed the uh, expectations of the customer, then really reinvesting in the team. What we've leaned into heavily is uh, manufacturing quality, um, on-time delivery, supporting these next generation technologies. Because having great ideas is one thing. Being able to execute on that is something entirely different. And the thing that's helped us is um, this strategy we've done in India is also reflected in how we've operated in other regions. In the US, we're leading. In Australia, we're leading. In Africa, we're leading. And so earlier this year, Next Tracker successfully executed one of the most successful IPOs of the year at that time. And it was, um, and we went public in the US. And so our financial uh, position is quite differentiated in the industry where we have. Um, a very strong liquidity position, uh, low debt, and uh, a very strong market cap in the industry. Since, since you mentioned the IPO now, how does that change a company's perspective? Because you've been a startup, you've seen 
you kind of literally set up a company, been through the hard grind. Now that you're publicly listed, you're open to much more, uh, you know, appraisals from outside. How does that change your perspective? Well, the IPO has been great for Next Tracker, be in part because it allowed customers to have visibility on our truly differentiated financial strength and position in the industry. And the uh, if you're an owner of a solar power system, you have a bit of a, a shorter experience with the NEPC, but you're really married to the equipment set for the life of the project. And so uh, we've built the company to last, both in terms of our financial profile, but also in terms of our culture and how we approach each customer engagement to ensure they're successful. So the IPO has been a great thing for Next Tracker, and also we've tried to provide a service for the industry by being the uh, the company that meets and beats expectations. Um, and we've been able to we've had a fabulous response from the investment community on the performance of the company. Benchmark for everybody else. We've done our best to not only perform for the Next Tracker investors, but try to be a gold standard for the industry, and show investors that they can invest with confidence in renewable energy. In India, what's the breakup? Would you be able to share that in terms of utility scale versus c and if at all, for you? For Next Tracker, we're really focused in, on larger systems in India, uh, which would be minimum of a few megawatts, but we have systems that are over a gigawatt that we're, sure. we're supporting. Yeah. yeah, we're really focused on the utility the scale. Our larger systems in India are over one gigawatt. And the minimum size you look at? A few megawatts would be... Five or ten, something like that. It's something, it's, we're, we're really focused on, when we get into smaller systems, would be a customer that has a portfolio of larger systems to make sure that the, we can adequately in, support and the uh, engagement. 10 gigawatt capacity, which is being announced today, that's coming up where? Oh, we have uh, over 10 manufacturing uh, partners throughout India that are geographically optimized. Okay, but which are the big ones? Would you remember them? We don't disclose specific uh, manufacturing partner locations. So these are partners, right? Local partners who manufacture for you? We consider everyone we deal with a partner. It's uh, less transactional. And so what we're, what we're focused on is, is being able to provide steady demand through our large portfolio of projects. And for India, we're not only serving the projects in India, but we're also exporting heavily out of India to serve the rest of the world. Okay, Dan, since you're sitting in the U.S. mostly, uh, you know, we've seen a huge manufacturing push thanks to the IRA in the U.S. We are seeing the European Green Deal pushing manufacturing in Europe. And of course, India has got the PLS scheme and the rest of it. The way manufacturing is coming up very fast everywhere. Do you see a situation of a glut in the market by 2026, 25? And what could that lead to? More protective policies, what could happen? Well, we've seen a shift from a globalization, make it the cheapest place and deliver to wherever, mm -hmm. toward a focus more on supply chain security, energy security, optimizing logistics costs. Next Tracker leaned into this early with a massive expansion of capacity in the United States, in India, in Latin America. And so we see solar as a disruptive, transformative technology in the power sector. What we've seen consistently is the growth of the market always surpasses reasonable expectations. So we've built our supply chain, our company be able to serve the market to accelerate the transition from fossil energy to renewable power. And what about Next Tracker's own net zero targets? Where are we and what's the plan there? Next Tracker is really focused a lot on how to deliver cleaner steel, mm -hmm. cleaner operations, and part of the global uh, supply chain optimization has also been to reduce the um, huge uh, carbon associated with transportation. Okay. And so regional manufacturing has multiple benefits, right. uh, not only for our carbon footprint, but for customers. Okay. But any numbers, years? I mean, are you going to look at, for example, renewable power for most of your operations at some stage? Anything else that you're doing? 
We've made steady progress on uh, decarbonizing our operation. We'll be speaking about specific numbers in future discussions. I really appreciate this interview. Thanks.